Hello everyone, I'm Marco Schwartz and inside this video you will learn how to build an OLED weather station using the ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip. So I will show you how to actually connect a sensor to this chip and also how to connect a simple OLED screen to actually display the information measured by the sensor right on the screen. So it will really make like, the foundation of a complete weather station that you can build using this chip. Of course, after this, you can uh, add more features to the project, for example, uh, use the Wi-Fi connection of the chip to actually also read those data remotely. So now I will switch to um, my desk here to show you how it's actually made. So let's first see what we actually need for this project. So you will need an ESP chip. I'm using here an Adafruit board. You will need a breadboard as well. I used a simple uh, breadboard here a DHT11 sensor, of course, to make the measurements, and then this OLED screen, which is an SSD 1306 uh, OLED screen that you can find basically anywhere. And of course, you will need a bunch of jumper wires. So now let's actually move to uh, how to actually build the board. So first, place the ESP chip on the board, just like this. After that, take your OLED screen and also place it right on the breadboard, just like that. And finally, place the last component, which is a DHT11 sensor, just like this. So now you have all the components placed on the breadboard. And now I will first put all the wires on the board. So first a red wire from the in, then a black wire from the ground of the OLED screen. After that, an orange wire from the reset pin, and then two wires connected to the clutch pin and also to the data pin. Just like that. Now, what I will do is connect the wires for the sensor. So just take a black wire, go from the last pin of the sensor, this is the ground. Uh, from the second pin, another cable, this is the uh, input of the sensor. And finally, take another cable and just go from the first pin of the sensor with this red cable, and that will be the positive power supply. So just connect that to the positive power supply on the board, then connect the ground. After that, connect the uh, output of the sensor to pin number 12 of the board. And now I'm connecting the power supply of the OLED screen, so the ground, and the positive power supply to 3.3 volt. After that, I will take the cable of uh, the reset pin. I will turn that to pin number two of the board. And finally, the data and clutch tables to pin number four and five. And my project is fully assembled. So now let's actually see the code for this project. So I just opened here the Arduino IDE. And I will show you the code for this project that you can, of course, access from the GitHub repository of the project. So there are some things you need to do before we can actually have a look inside the, the code for this project. And this is basically installing the right libraries for the project. So of course you need to have your ESP uh, chip uh, set up without the Arduino IDE. So make sure to look at all the videos on my channel for that. I explain that more into the getting started videos and also on the blog. Once this is done, um, you have these two libraries that you need to install and one is for the OLED screen the other one is for the EHT 11 sensor so for that I recommend to reuse uh, the library manager from the Arduino IDE so I'll just show you how to find that uh, for the DHT sensor you can just type DHT inside there and what I recommend is this DHT sensor library by Adafruit, so the simple one, uh, not the unified one, and this will work for this project. For the um, OLED screen, I just typed actually the name of um, the library here, so SSD1306, and here what you will find is uh, the OLED driver for this display for the ESP chip because this one is the official one from Adafruit but at least when I checked last time it was not compatible uh, with the ESP chip so make sure to install this one 
which is for sure compatible with the ESP chip that we are using here. So let's close this once you install everything. And now we can actually have a look at this stage. So I will put that more in the center of the screen. So basically what we do is we'll initialize everything, we'll clean up the display and then just make the measurements and also uh, display that on the screen. So first we import all the libraries with those commands here. We define the pins for the um, OLED screen. So here I'm using pin four and five because that correspond to those pin SDN, SCL on the chip. So if you have another uh, board that you are using here, make sure to also of course modify that in case you connected your uh, those two pins to some other pins on your board. Here you have the DHT sensor pin. Of course, if you connected that to another pin, make sure to change this as well. The DHT type, which is of course here DHT 11. Then we just create the instance of the sensor, which here is um, this DHT object. And finally, we also initialize the display. In the setup, what we do is simply start the sale. In case we need to uh, print some value for debugging, we initialize the DHT sensor and basically also initialize the display with this init function. And what we do at the start is just we clear the screen and just display nothing basically. Just to make sure that we can actually display some information later inside this loop. The loop itself is very uh, simple as well. We just basically read the data using those two functions, read humidity and read temperature. After that, we print um, the temperature just for debugging purposes. You don't actually need to access that uh, from the cyan monitor. And then we just build those two strings uh, for display on the OLED screen. So one for temperature, one for humidity. And after that, we simply clear the OLED screen in case there is anything on it. We set the font and then we just draw basically those two strings on the OLED screen. And after that, we actually display that. So we update the display of the OLED screen. And we do that every one second here because we want this loop to run continuously. So we actually update the value displayed on the screen. So that's basically the code. Um, it's not that complicated because it's basically just measuring some data and displaying that on the screen. So what I will do now is actually upload that to my board and I will also show you the result uh, right on the screen. So to upload that, I will just go into tools, make sure I have the correct board selected. Here I have an Adafruit board, but of course, if you are using anything else, make sure to select that in this list. And I made sure that I have the right serial port here for the uploading, and then I can just upload that. So now it's compiling, and once this is uploaded to the board, I will just completely switch the view from my desktop to uh, my camera so I can actually show you live on the project what's going on. Okay, so here you can see the project in action and you can see as we expect the temperature and humidity being displayed nearly in real time. Every second it's being refreshed and you can see that on the OLED screen. So I'm just here pinching the sensor just to show you quickly that if the sensor of course actually is heated up by my fingers here, the display will actually reflect that right on the OLED screen. So this is already the end of this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. So you saw in this video how to build an OLED weather station using the ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip. So of course, as I said in the beginning of this video, you can now really build on this project, for example, add more sensors, um, make several of those projects, power them by a battery, and of course, use the Wi-Fi connection of the chip to actually read this data also remotely. So if you have any comments or feedback about this project, don't hesitate to leave that below. That being said, thank you again for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.